Hi guys, Darren from Intrepid Survivalist here. What I want to go over today and show you how to make is koozies, or cozies as some people call them. There's different ways to make them, uh, but they can be used for a variety of things. Super handy when you want to keep stuff warm or cold. Uh, things like this titanium pot have a way of cooling your drink or food down dang near instantly. So uh, this is a game changer when you're when you're using metal, stainless, aluminum uh, things. So follow along. I'll show you how to make them. Now the things you're going to need for this project, uh, tools-wise, so it helps to have a ruler, straight edge, uh, sharpie, pair of scissors. For materials, you're going to need either an old sunshade the type you put in the windshield of your car or a roll of this stuff it comes in varying widths anywhere from uh, I think maybe 12 inch up to anyway I got a roll of the 24 inch version it's 25 foot long I want to say it cost me like 25 bucks at one of the big home home improvement stores the stuff is called Reflectix um, and it's an insulation is what it is you can wrap your hot water heater in it uh, Radiant floors, you can you can put it between floor joists and anyway, it's a insu insulation is what it really is, and that's what we're doing with it. And the roll of this here aluminum tape stuff. I don't know what they use this for. I think it's for taping up the uh, air conditioner or heat ducts in a in a house. But anyway, it works on this stuff wonderfully. And when you tape it, you can hardly notice there's a seam there. It just blends right in with everything. So now this material, this Reflectix material, what it is is sort of two layers of some kind of aluminum foil, but durable aluminum foil. It's, it's weird stuff, super flexible, and it's almost saran wrappy, but yet shiny. I don't know. And then what's in between it is almost like clear bubble wrap. So it builds an insulation barrier between it. Now while it'll help insulate, it's nowhere as good as your your Yeti cups or your Engo cups or your uh, clean canteens. These double vacuum sealed insulated items. Uh, but the beauty of it is you can put it on stuff you can cook in, you can put in the fire. You can't put any of these insulated objects in the fire to boil water in or to cook in uh, it'll ruin them they're vacuum vacuum sealed they're double layer and they've got a vacuum inside of them so if you put them in a fire you're gonna wreck them uh, so you can take an item you can put on flame or put it on the fire and give it a layer insulation first I need to get my height of uh, where I want this to be now I'm going to try to keep you in frame, but maybe a little tough to do. And work on the project. So bottom of my pot, top of my pot. Uh, some people might leave them a little, a little lower so they can get their lips on the top of their pot. On this pot, I rarely drink out of it, so I'm not real concerned about that. So. I'm going to pretty much go right to the top, which is going to put me right about in the middle of this bubble. So, and you just cut it with a pair of scissors. Double check my mark before I start cutting. Yep, I want to be probably, yeah, right up the edge of that bubble would be good. I'm going to turn you off while I do this, get you out of my way. Always cut it long. Something about this diameter, cut it an inch long, and it'll come out just about right. So, I want it to fit rather snugly with the handles folded in. So that's a pretty snug fit. So now what I want to do is, is tape the two ends together. I want to pull off, and what I'm going to do now is, is just tape them totally together, and then later I'll cut out from my handle. So I'm going to want about double 
how wide this thing is. Now when you're working with this tape, I guess when you do duct work you're supposed to pull the end off, stick it on and, and pull the backing off, but we're going to pull the entire backing off, but hold on to both ends of this stuff, watch. This stuff will curl up instantly on itself and instead of having aluminum tape you'll have a ball of aluminum foil so I want to put that pretty square there uh, here we go fighting the tape I'm trying to film and work with this tape here, I'm gonna stick it under the edge of that stuff there we go bring this edge over line everything up get it all nice and snug there we go wrap it around there we go I'm gonna cut that end off because it got folded over There. Check fitment. Yep, about what we're looking for. Nice and nice and snug on there. Okay, before we cut our handle hole, we want to make it a bottom. So now what we want to do is trace our diameter here. Basic keep my arm out of your way and I'm gonna spare you the details of cutting it but cut it along the line okay now what I want to do is cut about eight short pieces what helps to do that is if you'll tape the base layer of this this is a two-part tape you know a, a backing and then the tape itself there, tape, tape, oh, tape a piece down. This it may not stick on there that well. There, it's made to pull off of that. There, peel this here off. One about eight little strips. I'm gonna stick them to the edge of the table here. Again, I'll spare you those details. Now you might hear some serious rumbling in the background. I got one heck of a thunderstorm moving in. Well, I've cut my eight little pieces here. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to get our, our, our lid lined up and use those eight little pieces to uh, adjust and get, get this thing all centered and in place. Like about so. And this tape just blends right in with this stuff. You can hardly tell it was taped. And this will get everything mushed into place and lined up where you want it. And once we've done that, what I like to do is come back with this roll, and I'm going to pull this piece off, and go around the whole thing, and leave about, ah, come on, let go, half on the uh, wrap part and half on the, on the lid there, the bottom actually is what this is going to turn out to be. Wrap it all the way around, and we're gonna cut it. I'm trying to keep you in frame here, but everything's all slidey and slippery. There, mush it on there, good. Once that's done, I come back and I cut this thing. 
every half inch quarter inch somewhere i'll spare you all the details again i'll shut you down but um i just keep going around it and cutting it like so stand by all right so i got all my little fingers cut then all i do is just start folding these things in start at one place and go all the way around folding them down Oops, I just folded that one over, so I'm going to nip him off. There we go. I'm not exact with any of this stuff. I just cut it and fold it where it falls. Here, once I got it all on, mush it all, mush it all together. There we go. Yeah, that's a pretty good fitting one right there now. All right, now on the lid, and and basically the lid's going to be made the exact same way. It's it's I'm, I'm going to cut it a a lip that might come down about so far, and I cut a circle and and tape it all on the exact same way. It'll be it'll be the same thing as this, just half as tall, and it'll be a little bit bigger around because it needs to fit over this. So, I'll make that and show you the end results. No, no reason making you sit here and put you through the pain of watching all that boringness. There, I've got my lid made. So now what I want to do is uh, cut out my handle holes. Where I'm going to put them, see it's a nice snug fit, everything's really snug. Um, where I'm going to put these handle holes is right at the existing seam. So, just, you know, take my scissors, cut down the seam. Now, I want to leave as much meat as possible at the bottom underneath the handle and all to help this thing keep its shape. So, and also for heat retention purposes. So, I'm guessing cut it right there. When you get into this tape, this tape is real sticky. And sometimes a little bit hard to cut. There. Yeah, that's about right. Pretty, eh, not as snug as I wanted it to be, but I mean it's got a big split up the side. Now, I need to cut the lid, same fashion. Cut it on the existing seam. If I can find it. Yeah, there it is. Again, cut as minimal away as possible. keep that thing as insulated as possible and as help it keep its shape. There we go. That looks like a winner. Again, you can leave, uh, once you heat up your water and, and you want to cook your ramen or, or whatever your trail food is that you're boiling, uh, you don't have to get the water to a boil. Just get it to where it's bubbling a little bit. Get it hot enough. Put your food in. And then uh, put it in this and, and set it off to the side for 20 minutes. And let it just sit there and cook a little slower but still get done. Now, for those of you who are worried about weight on the trail, which a lot of packers are. I can understand that. Well, uh, let's check the weight of this bad boy. Okay, pounds and ounces. Here we go. Oops, sorry for the clanging. Okay, uh, let's see if you can see that we're all zeroed out here. So we're all, all zeroed out. And uh, it's 1.1, God, I'm getting a glare off of something. 1.1 ounces for this entire thing. So to me, that, that weight is uh, worth it. But 
hope you enjoyed the video as always if you can uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe it's free it helps me move up in the rankings and bring you more of this type of content thanks for watching be safe on the trail have a great day